So in this video, we're going to talk about some of the symptoms and signs that you'll see in your patients with Parkinson's. There's four classic signs and symptoms that we should be aware of in patients with Parkinson's. The first is something called bradykinesia, and bradykinesia basically means slow muscle movement. Brady, like bradycardia, is a slow heart rate. Kinesia is the science of muscle movement, so slow muscle movement. You'll also see patients with rigidity as well, and sometimes this rigidity can be quite marked to the point where they have quite a contracture and are not actually able to move the affected limb. Typically in the early stages, these are unilateral signs. These are on one side and not the other. But as you'll see in the presentation, as the Parkinson's progresses through the five stages, they will have more marked signs, the signs will be more severe, and they will start to affect the other side as well when they get to those later stages. What you find with Parkinson's patients as well is they have that classic tremor. And generally, this is the first sign that patients notice. And it will be something very subtle, like a finger moving, which will then move on to a hand, an arm, a leg. And these are the first signs that people often miss. And it's maybe a relative that actually picks up that they've got this tremor as well. And as you'll see in this presentation, the tremor is not typical of other tremors. It's quite special in the way that we can examine it. The next that they start to develop is a gait and balance disorder and that's all to do with that Parkinson's affects your motor core and that helps with your balance as well. So what you find is that they develop a shuffling gait and they also develop balance problems and as I'm sure you can appreciate this presents problems for patients with falls as well and you do see Parkinson's patients who are at about the level 3 or level 4 stage that start to develop falls and start to come into hospital as well. This is what a Parkinson's patient would look like in cartoon form. And because of the lack of dopamine, which is the fundamental problem with Parkinson's, you find that they'll have a blank facial expression. And they'll also have slow, monotonous, or sometimes even slurred speech as well, due to the lack of dopamine. They'll have the rigidity and tremors of the extremities, that's including the leg and the head, and they can also get rigidity in the neck as well. And this rigidity can be quite debilitating, and they can suffer with chronic pain from it as well. The gait and balance disorder that Parkinson's patients experience can be quite severe. And what you can see from here is that Parkinson's patients generally have a forward tilt to their posture. And that can be quite severe as they try and compensate for the balance problems and try and shift their centre of gravity forward and able to balance. To compound the problem though that they have reduced arm swing, but also they have these short shuffling gait as well. And what you can find with Parkinson's patients is it's quite common for them to catch their feet on objects around the home or outside and fall. So with that forward tilt plus the short shuffling gait, it's really easy for them to fall forward. Because their reactions are slower as well, you find that sometimes they don't extend their arms to break their fall and fractures, wrist fractures, hip fractures um, or, or shoulder fractures are really common in Parkinson's patients towards the end as they increase their falls. So we're going to take a look at these in a little bit more detail. The first one that we're going to look at is bradykinesia. Remember, bradykinesia is slow muscle movements. There's a video coming up. I'd like you to watch the video and then I'll comment on it on what's happening as well. Down, palm up, palm down as fast as you can. Good. The left hand, the same thing. Up, down, up, down. So what you saw there was a patient with Parkinson's being clinically examined for bradykinesia. And as we talked about earlier, these signs are usually unilateral early on in Parkinson's. And what you could see there was that his right arm moved quite well when he was pronating and supinating. But as he moved to the left arm, the affected side, you started to see that although he started at quite a good speed, that bradykinesia kicked in and it changed the amplitude and you could see that he was struggling to maintain that movement. Let's watch the video again. So this is the right side. You can see that he's able to supinate and pronate that arm quite well. But then as he moves to the left side, the affected side, you can see that it starts quite well, but then the amplitude changes, it becomes faster, it then becomes slower as well. And this is bradykinesia that can happen on the arms, but also on the legs. The next video looks at muscle rigidity. And this is something that causes Parkinson's patients a lot of problems in terms of chronic pain and discomfort. And it's a bit like having cramp. What you're going to see is a patient who's got quite profound muscle rigidity. I just want to have a look at the muscles contracting and the force that's being used 
to actually pull this patient's arm down. What you saw there was probably on the upper end of severity in terms of rigidity, but I think what you can appreciate is the amount of force that it actually took for this patient's arm to move down. You could see that the biceps was contracting quite severely, as well as the other muscles and tendons of the arm. And what you probably saw as well was the tremor as well on this side that was evident in the patient's hand. We're now going to have a look at tremors as well in a little bit more detail. The first one that we're going to have a look at is called a pill rolling tremor. And when we talked about early diagnosis of Parkinson's, this is probably the classic clinical sign that people with Parkinson's are diagnosed or investigated as well. And it starts with just two fingers, the thumb and the index finger. What you saw there was the classic pill rolling tremor and these tremors happen at rest and are not able to be controlled very well by patients. What you saw was the thumb and the index finger rubbing together and it's almost like if you were to place a pill between the patient's fingers they would be rolling it around. Classic sign of Parkinson's disease. The interesting thing about tremors in Parkinson's is that they are reduced on action and what that means is that the tremor will be at rest, but when patients actually go to make a purposeful movement, the tremor will actually be reduced, or sometimes if their medication is at the right level, will even be stopped, as you'll see in this next video. So what you can see here is quite a marked tremor on a patient with Parkinson's on the left side, a unilateral tremor. But what you'll notice if we play the video again is that it's quite a flapping tremor, but as the patient starts to make a fist and starts to make a purposeful movement, the tremor is reduced significantly until she opens her fist again and the tremor starts again. So Parkinson's tremors, when you next see someone in clinical practice, ask them to make a purposeful movement like opening and closing their fist and you'll find that their tremor will actually reduce. And that's how we can distinguish these kind of tremors from a non-essential tremor, which would happen both on action and on rest as well. The final video looks at a patient with Parkinson's walking. And remember, Parkinson's patients have that balance disorder and that forward-facing trunk as well, with leaning and a shuffling gait as well. As this gentleman walks across the camera, see if you can identify this gait and have a look at his feet at how close they are to the floor and think about how likely it would be if he were to fall in his own home. So what you saw there was a patient with Parkinson's walking across the camera and what you got a real sense of was that bradykinesia the rigidity in his legs and also the way in which they walk is that they start off slow and then gain speed as well and that's the bradykinesia taking effect. Let's just watch it again. You can see the shuffling gait on the feet that he doesn't pick his feet up very much. He starts to gain speed, slow down again and then gain more speed and you can see that posture there almost looks like the cartoon where he's leaning severely forward as well. It can also get a sense of the tremor as well. If we just watch it back, have a look at the patient's right arm. And you can see that fine tremor that he has while walking as well. But it's only unilateral, it's only on his right side, not on his left side. Parkinson's patients also experience some quite severe non-motor symptoms. It's not just the bradykinesia, the rigidity, the tremor or the balance problems that cause Parkinson's patients problems. Parkinson's is a really debilitating disease that affects all aspects of patients' lives. And what you find is that because of some of the tremors and the rigidity, they get something called micrographia, which is really tiny, poor handwriting. So next time you have a Parkinson's patient, see if they can write a sentence. And what you'll find is that the better controlled they are, generally the better 
writing that they will have. Parkinson's patients also suffer from really bad fatigue, from partly from the medication, but also the debilitating aspects of the disease, and later on start to develop speech problems. They also develop a loss of sense of smell, which leads also to a loss of taste as well. And you find that a lot of Parkinson's be patients because of this don't eat and drink much. And sometimes we need to supplement them with protein supplements as well. They also get dysphagia, trouble swallowing later on. And unfortunately that leads to one of the things that eventually generally leads to the death of a Parkinson's patient, which is aspiration pneumonia, which is a common cause for Parkinson's patients being admitted. They also get visual problems as well, and they also get something called orthostatic hypotension, which is where when a Parkinson's patient stands up, because it affects the autonomic nervous system, when they stand up, they are not able to regulate their blood pressure, the blood pressure goes low, and then they feel dizzy and sometimes fall over. So they have problems regulating their blood pressure as well. You get a lot of Parkinson's patients that will be standing up from a chair, fall over, black out, and then sustain an injury and are usually admitted to hospital following that. And the final thing that Parkinson's patients get in the non-motor symptoms is urinary incontinence as well. And you find a lot of patients with Parkinson's in those end stages are generally catheterized.